Welcome to the video companion for episode 69 of the Classic Horrors Club podcast. This video contains exclusive material that you won't hear on the podcast, which you can find on SoundCloud at the link shown below. It's summer and we're back on the drive-in circuit for the next three months. Tonight, we're watching Frankenstein 1970 and The Pit and the Pendulum. Grab your snacks at the snack bar and we'll meet at the car. I'm Frankenstein, the man-made monster. Who was buried alive 300 years ago? I'm here from the dead. Hey, Richard, I'm talking to you with my invisible uh, communication device. Uh, those of, uh, of you, I encourage you to listen to the audio podcast because you will get to experience our journey to the drive-in, which we are at right now. And, uh, but, but we are here now for the video portion. And Richard, where are we? We are at the Rochester Drive-In in Rochester, New York, and it is 1961. And they are doing four films tonight. We're going to stay for the first two. And they are two of, well, I don't know, two of the best, but you're dealing with two of the best actors in classic horror films. We've got Frankenstein 1970, starring Boris Karloff. And we have Pit and the Pendulum, starring Vincent Price, featuring Barbara Steele. Give, give Miss Steele a little bit of love as well. Uh, two fantastic films at this uh, great drive-in theater that's been open since 1942, uh, almost 20 years. Uh, we've got uh, a jam-packed audience here tonight, close to, close to capacity, which would be about 900 cars. Mm. This is a huge drive-in. Um, and uh, they have uh, one person at the cash register. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> they've got a great, uh, a great setup here. They've so we, we are here. Richard, you are out, out front. We wanted people to see the actual drive-in. I had to make a mad dash for the snack bar. I am starving. Uh, beat the crowd, apparently. So that's good. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to get yet, but uh, I'm going to get something. Any before we, you know, get ready to watch the, the first movie, anything you want to share? You, you mentioned a couple facts about the drive-in and anything else that, uh, I, I know you probably said it on the audio part, but anything you want to repeat in, in video interesting about this particular drive-in? Well, you know, you know me, I love old-time radio. And so this movie theater or this drive-in theater opened in 1942, May 29th. And uh, it had a very unoriginal title. <laughs> it was the drive-in theater. Uh, it didn't become the Rochester uh, until 1946, but in its opening night, it played a great movie called Look Who's Talking, uh, starring Jim and Marion Jordan as Fibber McGinn Molly, very popular radio show in 1942. And even here in 1961, we're only a couple of years removed from Fibber McGinn Molly leaving the air. And in fact, here in 1961, we still have a couple of radio shows that are still playing. The radio era is pretty much gone, but you can still tune in weekly and hear episodes of Suspense. And I believe there's at least one or two other shows still on the air in 1961. So uh, Look Who's Talking is a great movie. Uh, and it kicked off a, a wonderful uh, era of drive-in movie theaters. And uh, unfortunately, in our time in 2022, there's really not much left. It is now the Towers Airport Business Park. But uh, at least as of a few years ago, the concession stand building still stands. It's uh, obviously surrounded by a lot of different buildings. There's really no semblance of a drive-in theater, but the concession stand building is still there. You can still see the windows that uh, would have been the projection windows. They're kind of bricked over now, but they still are very visible. So if you are in the Rochester, New York area and want to kind of see where an old drive-in theater was, it's going to be a bit hard to find, but if you can find your way into the Towers Airport Business Park uh, and see that concession stand building, that's what's left. 
here in 1961 were and still in the prime of the Rochester Drive-In. So they've got a great giant horror show uh, playing three days this weekend and uh, four big movies and free gas for our car. I don't know how that works, but we'll have to check it out and uh, check out at least two of the films that uh, are going to be headlining and really two of the best, uh, as we said, Frankenstein 1970 and Pit and the Pendulum. And you said the first movie was Look Who's Talking. Uh, you didn't mention the, the cast, John Travolta, Kirstie Alley. <laughs> I was going to say, no, no, that's not it. Uh, no, yes, Look Who's oh, Talking. Huh? Uh, it was a early screening by about 40, 50 years. No. Okay. Look Who's Talking. Anyone who loves old time radio knows Spirit McGee and Molly and will know that Look Who's Laughing is their their biggest and best of their films. In fact, they incorporated it into their radio show. And it features a lot of familiar people from the day and even some today. I think everyone who loves classic movies will still know who Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy oh. and people who might not be into old time radio and might not even you know be into old movies will know the name Lucille Ball. She played a supporting role in the film, a young Lucille Ball. Um, so it's, it's actually a really fun movie. If you so it was called Look Who's Laughing. Look Who's Laughing. You did say, I think you said talking. Did I? That's, okay. And well, I thought, I missed that the first time. I should have made a joke. You uh, should have made a joke. So if I said Look Who's Talking, I, no, Look Who's Laughing. There's no I, John Travolta. There's no Talking Babies. We, we have uh, Fibber and Molly and, and The Great Gildersleeve. And we, now we do have a Talking Dummy and Charlie McCarthy, but you know. Nonetheless, yeah. that's well, uh, we're at a great location here at the Rochester Drive-In in Rochester, New York, not the Rochester Drive-In in Rochester, New Hampshire. That's a different location. Or Rochester, Minnesota, but I don't know if they have a drive-in. They didn't pop up on the cinematreasures.org website, so I would say no, they did not. <laughs> well, we're glad you all are here with us. We've got a, a great night, two great movies. We'll probably see maybe some uh, great drive-in ads. Uh, I say cartoon, I don't mean in, in, in terms of a full-length cartoon, but a lot of those ads are animated and, you know, dancing hot dogs and flipping. So uh, we're in for a great night and we're, we're glad you're with us. Uh, looks hot like dogs. You mentioned hot dogs. I, I got to get a hot dog before the movie starts. Okay, well, hurry. It's getting ready to start. We will, uh, we'll, let's, let's cut right now, get in our place and get ready to watch the movie. Come get a hot dog. Yum, yum. It's a meal in itself. Our all-meat super dog. Enjoy one now. Show starts in six minutes. Men, there's a drive-in movie full of juicy people. Wow! It, it's a trap! <laughs> Help! It's Pick! We've had it, men. <laughs> A pleasant aroma for you, but not for mosquitoes. Pick is easy to use. Light it and forget it. Pick's aroma keeps mosquitoes, gnats, and sand flies away. Pick is the best protection for barbecues, fishing and camping trips, or just relaxing in the yard. So if you don't want our company ever anywhere, just like Pick and see what I mean? Bye. Pick is on sale at the refreshment stand now. And now, on with the show. The one, the only, King of Monsters brings you the Demon of the Atomic Age. Boris Karloff as Frankenstein, 1970, carrying on the hideous experiments of his infamous ancestor. In this stone sarcophagus, deep in the bowels of the earth, he buried his creature, his creation. Frankenstein, 1970. In the hell pit of his century's old castle, he perverts the terrifying wonders of nuclear science. Let me get you some eyes. 
to unleash a horror beyond all imagination. What kind of dealings do you have with the director of the morgue? Are you interested in corpses? Even the cyclotron concealed in his subterranean vaults cannot complete his foul creation, for which he must have throbbing vital organs transplanted from living beings. Two people are missing, and I want to know why they haven't come back. Mr. Rowe, I imagine, would have us suspect foul play. Chris Karloff as Frankenstein, 1970. Richard, I found the best thing at the snack bar ever. I can't believe this always happens to us, but look who I found at the snack bar. Bill Mize. Yes, it's time. a fellow time traveler, Mr. Bill Mize. I is. spoke over you. I'm, I'm sorry for that. That's okay. I was standing in line waiting to get two chili cheese dogs at the concession stand, and I feel a tap, I feel a tap on my shoulder, and it's Jeff. I didn't you know, realize what really you were getting. You know, if you've ingested those already, maybe stand a little bit further. <laughs> How dare you, sir? What are you insinuating, my good man? What do you think? Okay, Frankenstein 1970. This is actually one that I had not seen before. Ooh. And when, you know, and when Jeff reached across the ether and said, which would you like to do, Pit in the Pendulum or Frankenstein 1970? I'm like, Jeff and I, as folks may know we have an affinity for the 1970s i'm still going to put jeff on the spot here and try to bully him into starting a podcast with me where we talk about 1970s movies and television i think it would be very groovy to coin a phrase uh but i had never seen this before i'm so like oh frankenstein in 1970 so i'm thinking it's going to be like you know dracula ad 1972 and I fire it up. I go grab. The, I grab a Blu-ray. I fire it up, and it's made in 1958, and it's in black and white. <laughs> but, but having said that, it was filmed in black and white cinescope, and it is so gorgeous, gorgeous. The movie itself. I, I'm really sorry about the script. Uh, spoiler alert. Near the beginning of the movie, there is a monologue that Karloff does when he's being filmed in the crypt beneath Castle Frankenstein that he has rented out to a very groovy film crew who seem to have varying degrees of marital stability and marriage vows. Uh, uh, let's just say that, you know, you know, the casting couch was in full effect even back in 1958. And but he he does this monologue and it's one take and it's got to be at least five page, four to five pages of script. And you just watch a master in action. If you do nothing but fire up this Blu-ray and watch the beginning of that, because it the wheels come off the wagon really fast in this. You both have sort of dogged the script already, and I, yes. I shouldn't say that shocks me. I I just I love it. It's so much fun, and I don't really critique it's, it for its script. And yes, that scene with Karloff is amazing, but someone had to write those words, and I actually yes, highlighted in my notes. You know yes. the things he said, talking about knitting flesh oh, together until it yes. had the oh, it's not very, inspired her. You know, the Mary very Shelley, image of the devil incarnate deep in the bowels yes. of the castle. I mean, oh, this language. Yes. Well, yes. Mary Shelley was like applauding from her grave on that <laughs> one because it was great. Karloff monologue, if in fact this is accurate and it's and it was improvised, oh yeah, just really enhances Gosh. that scene even more. No kidding. It makes me uh, retract my words and uh, think a little less of the script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Karloff's like, hold my beer. I'll show you how this is done, kids. Exactly. It's showtime. This 
was my father's world, Mr. Barnett. The shrieking of mutilated victims became the music of his life. The blood of a thousand men and women was spilled within these walls. Limbs twisted and broken, flesh burned black. Starring Vincent Price, truly a master of the macabre. John Carr in a challenging role. Barbara Steele, more blood chilling than in Black Sunday. And introducing taunting Luana Anders. Nicholas. Elizabeth. Is that you? Elizabeth? While we were up here mourning her, she was alive. Struggling to be free. Then you are lying, sir. When Maria screamed, where were you? You lie! I'm going to torture you, Isabella. I'm going to make you suffer for your faithlessness to me. <laughs> you harlot! All the violence of angry seas. The unseen forces of the unknown. The unforgettable memories of a long forgotten childhood. All these you will feel in your very blood. Do you know where you are, Bartholomew? You are about to enter hell. Richard, I just, I love that movie. Every time I see it, I love it more and more. Let's just kind of sit here and talk about it for a few minutes, let everyone else leave. You know, I hate sitting in traffic. So what, what do you think of The Pit and the Pendulum? Oh, okay, Vincent Price. So immediately you're you're in good territory. You got that warm blanket around you again. And so many vibrant colors and it's so, it's, it's classic Price in a Gothic setting and I agree. This is a movie that I think every time I see it, I appreciate it more and more. It's just from this golden era of Price where he was doing the Poe adaptations, which, let's be honest, really don't have much to do with Poe. Sure, we've got a pit, and yes, we have a pendulum, but they almost seem shoehorned in at one point. doesn't matter because the rest of the film is great. I wonder if he improvised any of his lines. You know, we pointed out in the last movie some of the lines and then came to the conclusion perhaps Karloff improvised them, but... Price has similar dialogue, which I would have credited to the script. Richard Matheson, great writer, evokes words like spawn of his deprived blood, malignant atmosphere of castle, you know, things like this that yeah. come out of his mouth. And it's just golden the, out of Vincent Price's mouth, the way he says them. And, and it's just wonderful. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. Another, another trip to the past. Yeah, I kind of lost track of time, but everyone else has left. I think we can hit the road. And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.